Is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order a good Star Wars game? Well, that's a tough question to answer, but we did it. If you wanna know if Fallen Order, or really any Star Wars game is any good, just ask yourself five questions. The first question is, does it have the iconography? Star Wars games should let you do things that can only happen in Star Wars, like chilling in a cantina, or flying a spaceship too fast through an enclosed space, or using telekinesis to choke an old British man. Shadows of the Empire tried to capture some of the magic with these one-off levels where you do real Star Wars stuff, but you spend most of the game playing as a bargain bin Han Solo shooting ATSTs in the ass. It's not iconic. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got Battlefront, which packs so many Star Wars icons onto the screen at any given moment that it almost feels like overkill. It's uh, it's kind of like the traveling Wilburys of Star Wars games. It's cause, uh, the Traveling Wilburys was a rock supergroup with Tom Petty and Roy Orbison and George Harrison. Second question, does it sound like Star Wars? Does it have the and the and the In the original films, Ben Burtt combined the sounds of an old film projector and a TV tube recorded through a faulty microphone cable to create the sound of the lightsabers. He banged wrenches off of metal cables. And then John Williams came in and did his John Williams thing. In the old games, the sound just didn't sound big enough. But this is the thing that's improved with video game technology. And some games really go the extra mile. On top of the perfect ship sounds and laser blasts, Rogue Squadron 2 also went out of its way to get that familiar sort of crackly distortion to the radio chatter. Leader, this is base one. Keep half your group out of range for the next run. That's a good Star Wars. The third question, is it fashion? Star Wars jams together bits of sci-fi speculation and military history and high fantasy with a healthy dash of the good old 1970s. Most of these dudes look like they're here on shore leave. The fashion doesn't just create that unique Star Wars look, it also tells you things about the characters. If you need to know what somebody's all about, just look at their fit. At just a glance, you can tell that Ben Kenobi is a reclusive monk slash samurai warrior, and that Poe Dameron is a dashing pilot, and that Lando Calrissian fucks. Force Unleashed was really missing that 1970s flavor. It streamlined a lot of the costumes, resulting in things that were either too gritty or smooth or just video gamey. This is Juno Eclipse. A Star War. Starkiller looks like the protagonist of a mid-aughts action game called Mind Prophecy, Dark Visions. Give him a mustache. If you're still trying to figure out if this is a good Star Wars game, use the full thing on this list. <laughs> does the setting feel real and believable and lived in? If so, it does not belong in Star Wars. Star Wars is all about shockingly impractical architecture. Walkways next to bottomless pits with no guardrails or a circuit breaker on a little platform surrounded by a bottomless pit or maybe a hard drive array dangling in the middle of a room over a bottomless pit. But bottomless pits aren't the only unifying design element of Star Wars environments. There are also holes, shafts, chutes, chasms, caves, crevices, and the occasional yawning abyss. Seriously, this is so important to Star Wars. There needs to be a sense of constant peril, like one wrong step would just lead to you plummeting a billion feet to your death. Jedi Outcast totally nailed this, especially the Nar Shada level, which was like 95% bottomless pits, 4% Rodians, and 1% places you could stand without dying. And five, is it good? You may have noticed that we made it this far without even discussing the quality of the gameplay, and that's because in the big picture, it doesn't really matter all that much. We'll put up with a lot to be whisked away to the magical world of Star Wars. So if your controls are dog shit, or if your game is stupidly hard, it's still pretty magical. So what happens when we apply this to a good Star Wars game? Well, let's take a look at Super Bombad Racer. Not today, Patrick. Today we're gonna use this rubric on the platonic ideal of a good Star Wars game. Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Does it have iconography? You bet. And not only that, but Bioware had to work in a part of the Star Wars timeline that no one else had before. So they had to understand the archetypes of Star Wars. The dashing rogue, the reclusive Jedi, the sarcastic robot, the Wookiee. And it sounds great too. The lasers go and the lightsabers go. And the music sounds like John Williams without actually using John Williams. 
and they nailed the costumes too. They evoke Star Wars without outright copying it. There are Mandalorians with Boba Fett style battle armor and cyborg Sith villains. Even the Jedi evoke different styles, from the rumpled hermit Jedi to the warrior monk. But where does it take you? All over the galaxy, baby! You can go to Kashyyyk, home of the Wookiees who live up in trees, but don't worry, you're going down to the surface where all the apex predators live. Or what about Manon, a planet covered in one giant ocean? There are floating cities, but don't worry, you're gonna go down to the bottom where the apex predators live. And guess what's in the final level? And that's why Knights of the Old Republic is one of the great... I forgot. Is it a good game? Well, it is a solid Bioware RPG with some atrocious racing and turret minigames. Which is why it is the greatest Star Wars game ever made. And now, let's talk about KOTOR 2, the Sith. Mom says it's my turn on this Star Wars. So can we apply this to the new Star Wars game, Jedi Fallen Order Star Wars? First question, iconography. Yep, nails it. We got a lightsaber right off the bat. We've got a beautiful, unique baby droid who I will die to protect. And the demo that we saw starts with a flyby from a little spaceship. It sounds like Star Wars. The lightsaber's perfect. They actually brought back Ben Burt, that guy we talked about earlier, to create the sound of your beautiful baby droid friend. Uh, so, mm, mm, they did it. Question three, did they get the costumes right? No, they're cowards. Just look at this Riverdale haircut. Doesn't have a bad mustache or anything. And you just don't know exactly what he's supposed to be. And that kind of sucks. And even the villains that we've seen so far are sort of less intimidating versions of Sith villains we've seen in the past. And the fourth thing, does the setting make sense? Absolutely not, it's perfect. Like seriously, as soon as the demo starts, there is a bottomless pit. And within like five minutes of landing on this planet, he's already fighting all of the apex predators that live there. He has to walk through a tunnel that has a rotor spinning in it for some reason. A bunch of giant grinders next to a prison, next to a pit. What are they doing there? The Jedi guy is standing over a platform with a fucking spinning bridge in it, which has no reason to exist. What are they, do what were they doing? It's perfect. And the final question in whether or not this is a good Star Wars game, is it good? I mean, we don't know. I haven't played it. Have you? Does your uncle work at Star Wars? Can I do a Wookiee? No, I can't do a Wookiee.